tight. That's it. You should be real comfortable now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm comfortable. Now, come down on your invisible dog. Let me see. Come down on him? Yeah, like pretend like you got a dog in front of you. Visualize your dog. Turn that foot. Got to turn that foot still. Got to have that foot turned. Okay, now I'm going to tell you why your posture ain't right. This foot got to be like this. There you go. Now, bring that back leg in just a little bit. There you go. Now, that's a little right there, right there. Now touch your dog on the head. Bam, look at you now. You look much better. Bring him on up. Follow him up. Watch him. Watch his all the way. Now touch him and make him go where you want. Let me tell you what Earl Jones used to tell me. There's no reason for a dog to be out of control if you're standing in front of him. You're supposed to be controlling the motion of the dog. Right. Okay? When you're doing protection, you control the motion of the dog. How is it that dog jumped all over you and ate you in the face and bit you in the groin and he just ate you all up? Because you lost your mind. Right. That dog is supposed to be where you want him to be at all times and he's never supposed to be anyplace else. Okay? Mm -hmm. So anytime that dog gets out of control, it's because you out of control. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. And that's the main thing. So, so I, I just want you, I want you to remember that when that dog, when you, when you, when you working with that dog and you driving that dog for you. Now, the whole idea is to make the dog drive you out of whatever you in. Ultimately, what is his job going to be to do? If a perpetrator comes in, he's supposed to do what? Drive, drive the perpetrator out. out. Right. So from day one, the first thing you want to teach that dog to do is what? Drive you out. Right. Right. Let him. And, and let me tell you something. Obedience. I don't let dogs win in obedience. Now that's my technique. You do it the way you want to do it. I do encourage them. I do pet them up and tell them good boy or good girl, okay? Mm -hmm. But I don't let them make decisions. I make all the decisions in obedience. That's not the way you do it. That's the way you do it, okay? This is the way I do it, okay? And, uh, but in, in protection, let the dog win all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. When the dog first hits the floor, he got to win the first day. He should never lose again. Never. Ever. Challenge him. Challenge him. You know why? Because life is a challenge. If you're not challenging the dog, the dog is not going to stand up. The dog is not going to stand up. All right? Yep. And I will tell you something. The highest level of protection is obedience. Is obedience manifested in protection. Did you hear what I said? The highest level of protection is obedience manifested in protection. I would much rather have a dog that bites because I told them to. Protection is the tools, the, the, the wrench, the screwdriver, the, the catalyst. Yeah, it's all of the variables associated with how he's going to execute protection. Okay? But the reason he does it the motivation, as long as I'm present, is because I said so. Right. Okay? He's not going down there because he's a killer and he just wants to kill 50,000 people. So you're saying not because he's fully aggressive? Yes. It has nothing to do with that. Not because he's defensive? That's a trait necessary okay. to participate. If I want to be a football player, I need to possess the traits necessary to participate in the sport. Right? Right. But I don't make no moves until the quarterback say, Mike, there you go. Are you feeling what I'm saying? I'm with you. And only in, only, I don't have no, I don't have the, uh, the, 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 the right to, uh, uh, as, as the dog, I, the dog should not have the right to be indiscriminate. He don't decide to bite when he wants. He don't decide to lay down when he gets ready to lay down. Right. Unless you tell him out and he's free time. You give him that out, that means he's free to do what he want to do. If he want to go do something, that's fine. Other than what? Other than bite. Other than bite. Why? You present. But the moment I leave him by himself, I release him to make decisions to protect my house or my property. And I simply give him a command that alerts him and lets him know, oh, it's me now. I'm calling the shots now. He going to walk around and pee on trees and scratch dirt because he know he in charge. You come up in there, you have to deal with it. But the moment I come back in his presence, he has no more authority. You know what I'm saying? Now, yes, that's how my obedience is expressed the best. I like my dog because I know what my dog is doing. He's doing it because I told him, which means I can stop my dog on a dime and leave nonsense change. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I'm not worried about it. Anytime my dog go down there, I'm not ever worried about my dog getting out of control because my obedience 
dominates everything. You really, you really destroy, display your greatest ability. When you get a guy who's got a dog, he's not that hot. He's not really that hot. You know, he's really not that hot. He's, he's a little aggressive, maybe a medium aggressive dog, because there can't be nothing else other than medium aggressive. Right. But after medium aggressive, he's just a dud. Okay, but if you get a medium aggressive dog, and you can teach that dog to amplify his or her skills, mm -hmm. as limited as they are, okay, and get him to demonstrate as though he's a high powered dog, Right? Right. The only way to make that happen is out of obedience. I agree. The psychological process has to exceed his physical ability to be aggressive, his mental ability to be aggressive, his passionate limitations of aggression are expressed best through obedience, which means I can take a dog who is completely obedience trained on, with, the, with the mindset that I'm going to place and the communication value that I'm going to give this dog, right? Right. And cause this dog to believe that he is as tough as another dog. And when you see him work, you won't be able to tell. Now it takes a lot more work to work this guy. There's a lot more work to work this guy and a lot more money. So if you got a dog you love to death and you bring him to me, I'm first of all, I'm gonna tell you he's not suitable. That's the first thing I'm gonna tell you, he's not suitable. He's medium aggressive, he don't even wanna do this. But if you insist, get your pocketbook open. Get your pocketbook open. Don't come to me with no 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 food stamps and no coupons. I'm not trying to hear. Are you hear know what I'm saying? Yep. I'm not trying to hear. I will make Tom Tom come on out and do something. Tom Tom gonna bite. Tom Tom gonna bite. He used to didn't bite wet paper. He, but he gonna bite. Tom Tom gonna bite. Tom Dang. Tom go bite. He finna eat up yeah. some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but you better have your money ready. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So so but and, and what I'm really talking about is is our technique. That's really what I'm saying. Right. What what Lieutenant Earl Jones gave us. Right, it was the cream of the crop. You know what I'm saying? It was the cream of the crop. When that man met me, I was homeless, living in an abandoned building. Right? Right. Some guys, he he paid my tuition to go to school. So let me gave ask, me a scholarship. Yeah. Let me ask you one question. What's that? Since we spoke about the masters. Yes. Who are the masters? The dead, masters. Dead. And then the masters only left living. Who are the masters? Who are the masters? Yeah. You want me to tell the truth? Tell the truth. Because I'm the only one. I'm the one that really knows. There's a lot of guys out there claiming to be masters. Who are the masters? Only a master can make a master. That's the first thing. Pretty much. Okay. That, that's the way it goes. So let's see how it is. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, this is a guy I never got to meet. His name was Plummer. Mm -hmm. He was a Caucasian boy. He was cold. They say oh. he was wicked, a wicked ticket. Yeah. Jim Stratton, master. Okay, that's Jim. My, Jim Stratton. Okay. The James Stratton, that's Michael Stratton's dad. Mm -hmm. James, Gypsy, world famous. Master, okay? okay, one of the greatest to ever live, the earth shaker maker, Scorpio, Cleophis Jones, yes, sir, okay, Lacey Sanders, Lacey Sanders. you know what I'm saying, master, you know what I'm saying, Joe Kidd, master, okay, these guys was like the bona fide, you know what I'm saying, Dewey's yeah. Dobermans, Dewey, so, 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 so it's started from the top, it's, yeah, hit, hit the first one. The first one, Lieutenant Earl Jones. He's the, he Earl started the tree. Jones. One. That's number three. That's okay. number one. Number two. Okay. Now I never met Plummer, but Plummer was one. Plummer. Number right. two. Number but, three. Uh, Gypsy. Gypsy. Right. What about James? Number four. Uh, James Stratton. James. Right. That's not necessarily the chronological order. Right. We're not I'm giving. Just, I'm just naming. We're naming them. masters. That's right. It. I'm, that's it. Not right. in any specific, specific order. order. Right. So please don't be offended. Right. If you came up third and, and you thought supposed you should be first. first. <laughs> Joe Kidd, if you out there, boy. <laughs> Joe Kidd. Boom. Joe Kidd. Number five. Cream of the crop. All right. Uh, 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 who else? Uh, 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 let me see. Joe Kidd. Oh, oh. Versta Coleman, Jr. Junior Coleman. Junior Coleman. Junior Coleman. Now, the great Cleophis Jones. Scorpio. Scorpio. The greatest of the greatest in the game. Ever right. seen the game. Lacey Sanders. Lacey. Lacey. Man. You never met Lacey. Lacey, bam. He, he cold, cold dude, cold. Lacey Sanders, master. Matt Lacey. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And then who else? Uh, okay, now I'm struggling. You know why, don't you? Might not be on the list. You might not be on the list. You might not be on the list. You might not be on the list. Let me say who else. Uh, 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 uh. Um, dang. One of my kids, one of my trainers, one of my trainers. Dana. Dana Douglas, Boom. master. Dana Douglas. Yes, Dana, Dana Douglas. So we got a 10-piece. 
We got we got we just got about one more, ten more, one more, one more. I don't I don't I don't know who the, who I'm thinking. It's probably somebody I didn't just put meet. your name on the list and that's it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I forgot about myself. <laughs> we don't want to talk about nobody else. And the illustrious Don Cruz, aka. That's a ten. You know what I'm saying? My name right now is P Don Mega, Prophet Don Mega. My old name was Don Cruz. So I am the prodigy. Thank you.